Hey, my name is Chris Brennan, and this is your astrology news segment for Friday, July 19th, 2024. So I just wanted to do a little short video to recap some of the crazy stuff that's been happening over the past week in the news during the course of the Mars-Uranus conjunction that occurred this week. It went exact on July 15th, but it has an orb that extends out at least a week on either side. So we're still very much in the thick of it at this point, even though it's starting to separate. So Mars Uranus conjunctions, they happen uh, just about every two years. So it's not something that happens frequently. And when it does happen, it often coincides with some pretty notable events. So uh, recapping the events, obviously the major thing that occurred and one of the earliest things was the uh, near assassination of Donald Trump that occurred on July 13th, just two days before the Mars-Uranus conjunction went exact. So that was hitting his chart in a very specific way because it was conjoining his midheaven in his 10th house of career and reputation, but it was also squaring his Mars, which is in the first house of the body and the health and the appearance. And his Mars at 26 degrees of Leo is conjunct his ascendant at 29 degrees of Leo. So in that instance, we had um, a notable event of a near assassination in which he was um, hurt when his ear was grazed by the bullet. So Mars Uranus conjunction sometimes have a reputation for unexpected violence uh, because Mars represents uh, war, violence, bloodshed, and other keywords like that traditionally, whereas Uranus represents things that are unexpected, things that are sudden, uh, things involving technology. Sometimes Mars Uranus in particular is associated with guns. So that was a notable event. That's one of the most notable events of the Mars Uranus conjunction that I think everybody will remember. But also um, a few other things happened with Trump over the past week. Two of them were right on the very day of the conjunction as I, that I was tracking. One of them is that he announced his vice presidential pick um, on the day of the Mars Uranus conjunction in his 10th house. Um, and that was one of the things that took place that day on the very first day of the Republican National Convention. Another major thing that kind of got brushed over because of um, all of the, the news surrounding the assassination attempt is that he had a major court case that was dismissed by the judge on July 15th, right on the day of the Mars Uranus conjunction. And this was the classified documents case which had actually come together and started about two years ago when the FBI raided um, his house at Mar-a-Lago, and that was also around the time of a Mars-Uranus conjunction in Taurus in his 10th house just two years ago. So that kind of shows you sometimes how Mars-Uranus conjunctions can be connected. And speaking of that, um, one of the things that came out about the shooter of the near assassination is that it turned out that he was actually born on a Mars-Uranus conjunction back in 2003. So all of that is striking and just showing how these conjunctions sometimes can tie together not just events and time periods, but also sometimes people as well. So on the other side of the political spectrum, um, a major... Uh, Mars Uranus event that came out just a few days later in the past couple of days is that Joe Biden uh, got sick with COVID and announced that he was unexpectedly sick and had to step back and cancel some campaign events. And this is notable from an astrological standpoint because the Mars Uranus conjunction was taking place in his sixth house, which has to do with illness and health. So a Mars Uranus conjunction, and he had a sudden unexpected health issue come up um, with that Mars Uranus conjunction taking place there, and that was pretty striking. So um, he had only been sick with COVID two other times, and I was tracking this and went back, and I'm pretty sure that the first time that he got sick with COVID was two years ago in 2022, and that's also when Mars was transiting through Taurus. So again, we see a repetition of like a similar signature, a similar transit for him with Sagittarius rising. Taurus just happens to be his sixth house of illness. So sometimes things related to that can arise when you have a transit of Mars in that area. But this one was much more potent because um, it happened right on that Mars Uranus conjunction. So along with that, um, the Mars Uranus conjunction 
at 27 uh, Taurus was, when he announced, was opposing his son, which is at uh, 27 degrees of Scorpio. So that's part of the indication in terms of taking a hit in terms of his vitality. But also, uh, his son is at 27 Scorpio and Venus is at 28 Scorpio. So over the next couple of days, transiting Mars was also opposing not just his son, but also his Venus placement. And Venus rules not just his sixth house of el illness, but also his 11th house of friends and groups and alliances. And over the course of that transit, I was watching many high-ranking Democrats were starting to come out and say that he should drop out of the race uh, due to his health issues and due to the issues displayed in terms of his age at the debate, um, since he was still dealing with fallout from that over the past few weeks. The debate, of course, which, as we talked about in the last forecast episode, uh, occurred the night that Saturn was stationing on the degree of his IC in Pisces, so opposite his midheaven. So um, it was interesting, just from an astrological and a technical standpoint, seeing transiting Mars opposing the ruler of his 11th house and having um, these calls coming from friends and allies for him to drop out. And some of the reports were that he was privately very frustrated um, with this, which you can kind of imagine, because anybody that's had a Mars transit knows that um, sometimes they can coincide with periods of feeling more angry or irritable or feeling like you're under attack. So that's still ongoing and that's happening right now. Um, then today, if that wasn't enough in terms of all the unexpected news stories, um, the largest tech outage in history just took place today when the cybersecurity firm CrowdStrike pushed an update to Windows, which crashed um, just tons of computers worldwide, which took down airlines, hospitals, banks, um, anything that was running a Windows computer that uh, accepted this update would then not be able to boot up again and would go to a blue screen of death is what it's called. So this is a hugely notable event um, and fits the symbolism of, of Mars Uranus, the archetypal symbolism, just so perfectly because it was an unexpected technical disruption, which is another side of Mars Uranus that's just brilliant, where Uranus represents technology, but also unexpected things, and Mars represents severing and separation and disruption and sometimes... Uh, you know, killing or death. And ironically, it was being referred to as the blue screen of death because it was like um, killing these machines and making it so that they couldn't boot up again. So that story is still in the process of working out and being rectified, but it will be memorable that now astrologers can add this to our memory banks in terms of uh, what's being reported as one of the largest tech disruptions in history occurring on this Mars-Uranus conjunction. And many people are saying that this is essentially what people feared the Y2K bug would be way back in the year 2000, but uh, just millions and, and billions of dollars were put towards trying to avert that disaster, and it was largely fixed ahead of time. But this is um, comparable because here we had something that actually happened where this update just crashed millions or thousands of computers worldwide. So that's an incredibly striking event and, and just another one to add to our list of events that occurred under this particularly difficult Mars-Uranus conjunction. Um, and this one's also interesting with this event that just occurred today on the 19th because now Mercury is getting later in Leo and it's moving into a square with Uranus and eventually it's going to apply to a square with Mars. So Mercury is already slowing down and getting ready to station retrograde in Virgo before too long. And that's part of the energy of that as well, is that we're building up to a Mars a Mercury retrograde. Mercury's already entered its shadow, so it's already entered the and passed the degree that it will later retrograde back to. And then Mercury's applying to the square with Uranus and to to Mars. So it's just emphasizing the technical snafu, technical disruption aspect of the Mercury-Uranus conjunction. So it's interesting seeing that in terms of, you know, the earlier end of this conjunction, we had a notably violent event, 
And now as we're getting to the later part of this Mars-Uranus conjunction, we see a hugely notable technical snafu once Mercury gets closer that it starts lending some of its significations to, to the whole pool of things. So lots to learn in terms of the astrology. In terms of the future, um, tomorrow Mars moves into Gemini. So there's some major, these are the major stories that happened this week, but um, there should be a tone shift as soon as tomorrow, as Mars finally completes its transit through Taurus and its sign-based conjunction with Uranus and moves to Gemini. So that's not just going to be a tone shift, but it's also going to be the beginning of starting to lessen and decrease the conjunction between Mars and Uranus and the intensity of those energies. So they're still going to be within a 10 degree orb for a bit now. They're only like three or four degrees away now. So it's still going to be a while before they fully move out of the degree based orb of influence and start to get enough space that that conjunction starts to fall into the background. But I think that this shift of Mars moving into Gemini will be the first step in that process. And we'll start to see some of that energy cool down in terms of Mars Uranus, although then we're going to move into a whole other area of the summer with Mars moving into and getting ready to conjoin Jupiter and then square Saturn towards the middle of August. And that's actually going to coincide with the Democratic National Convention. So that'll be the next set of alignments that we have to look forward to in terms of major fireworks that are upcoming this summer. So those are the major uh, news stories. So if you enjoyed this video, drop me a like and uh, make sure to subscribe and also drop me a comment and let me know if there's other news stories that you saw that really matched with the Mars Uranus conjunction or let me know if um, there were some specific events that occurred in your life that matched that conjunction that were notable and striking for you as well personally. I'd love to hear both because as we collect these stories and we start to compare them and, and talk about and assess what happens, I think that we can learn a lot from from looking at these things. So, all right, I think that's it for this video. So thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you again next time.